Hey guys, Shan this side. Welcome back to the channel. And today would be the first and the quick video on the J unit series. And today we will cover like what exactly is unit testing and how it is different from integration and functional testing. So generally this looks very easy, right? But sometimes when we are implementing it, we mix uh, most of the functionalities between each other. And even in the interviews, like we might get confused. So it is very, very important to have a clear distinction between all these three. So what is unit testing? It's a testing method where individual unit, individual unit mean method or function. So where individual unit is tested in isolation. So let's say in this example, we have a class calculator and it has one method calculate multiply and it just simply multiply the parameters value which it is getting and return it. Now if we have to test this class, so we will something like calculator test class. And we will, we will write a unit test cases for each of its individual unit for each of its method. Now the, how we will write the test cases, we will see that, but our goal is to test this individual method. So here we will call this like, Hey, calculate multiple this method and pass this value four comma two. And now what you are expecting, this method should return eight. Okay. So this is, we are doing a testing that if you pass value four and two into the parameter, it should return me eight. Okay. And this method is considered as individual unit. Okay. For now, don't worry about how to write this test case. We will see it later, but for now you need to understand what exactly is individual unit, right? And another thing is it should be tested in isolation. So very, very important part here. If you see what exactly isolation means. So again, understand this with an example, I have written a class calculator. It has the same method calculate multiply, but instead of multiplying exactly here, it is calling a utility class method multiply. So I have created one num number utility class number utils. Okay. And I am invoking its method multiply and passing the parameter value a B. It is actually doing the multiplication and returning it. It's very, very simple. Okay. But only difference is instead of multiplying here itself, I am calling another class method and there I am doing the multiply. Now see that what does test in isolation means. So currently let's say that calculator class is in test. I am testing this calculator class and I am testing all its method. It's method, method one, method two. I am all testing all its method. So, Goal is to test in isolation means we need to test the functionality of calculate multiply method. So when this class is under test and its method is individual unit, we are writing a test case. So calculate multiply method, we have to do a testing. So our goal is to test this method only. My goal is not to test a method which is present in another class. Okay. So we don't want to do a testing of multiply method. We don't want to test this another method, which is present into another class. Okay. So we mock this nums util dot multiply. So what we will do is we will do something like this. Don't worry about this. Just understand like how we can generally mock it. So when num number util nums util dot multiply method is invoked with certain value, let's say four comma two, then we have to return eight. Okay. So we can control, we can mock it. Currently this looks very easy A into B. You can might I say, why not to call and test it also assume that this itself is very big class, very big class. It has a lot of dependency. It is calling another class C and its method. And that method again, calling some another class that method. Now you are ultimately testing all the different class methods, which is not the intention. A question might come to you that, okay, Shayansh, what if, what if this method one, which I am doing a current testing of, it is invoking a method, which is present into the same class, not into the different class, but into the same class. Do we need to mock it also? No. If you skip this, if you mock this also, for example, if you mock this also, you are not actually testing your own logic itself. 
okay you just divided this logic into different methods so that it is easy to read and you can say that easy to manage but this all logic belongs to a part of one functionality itself like one this method only okay but you only divided you have this is a private method method 2 you have a private method 3 you have divided the whole big logic into multiple methods a small small private method so when you are testing this one method 1 which is public now you should all test your this private methods also like internal methods also so okay so when this method 1 is called and if it is invoking method 2 let it call let's not mock it up so what are the advantages of unit testing always remember it's a first line of defense okay why first early bug detection for example very very simple i'm just saying that you are writing one method now you are testing it that hey if user send me this value 4 2 i should expect it what if this method return by mistake somebody does this a into b minus 1 and it is not returning this and it is returning 7 then you identify that hey what exactly got changed i am expecting 8 why it is returning 7 then you while debugging you find out that hey someone else has made the modification into this because of some different requirement or maybe whatever i am expecting to do is some thing is wrong so this is very simple example just to tell that it can the bugs can be caught before itself before it goes live while you are writing the code it is possible that you able to identify a bug refactor confidently so this is very very important point this unit test cases warn us if something breaks right and so that we don't break it silently so i have refactored the code maybe let's say that in the same class this is the method 1 I have refactored it. I have refactored it earlier. I have now refactored it using some Java 8 feature. Okay, let's say through stream. Earlier it is without a stream. Now I refactor it with with a stream. So I only change the logic, but the input and output this method should return should remain the same. Okay. So, but what if while doing the logic change from let's say earlier it has for loop, now I've changed it to a stream. what if something is not working expected okay so this unit test case whatever i have written for this method one that for this input i should get this output if this new refactored code is not returning that same it will warn me it will fail so that i can now this will increase me the confidence of doing a refactoring documentation sometimes what happen is you don't understand this method what is the functionality written into this method but if you look at its test case method 1 test if you look at its respective unit test case you will easily understand that hey okay this method expectation is if i send this input i will get this output and it's like a live documentation for you okay so it will tell you how a method behaves which can act as a documentation another is safe cost fixing bugs during development is way cheaper than fixing them after the app goes live so if we understand what is unit test case we have to have a better understanding between unit integration and functional testing so that when somebody is talking with us that hey have you written a testing have you written a integration testing unit testing functional testing we should be proper clear in our mindset what exactly this testing means so just see this diagram that unit testing is a smaller unit integration testing is little wider scope functional testing is like much wider scope okay unit test you already know that testing an individual method in isolation in isolation means we have to test only that method present into that class we don't have to if this method is calling some other method into different class we don't have to invoke it we have to mock it now what is integration testing understand this one testing of multiple modules or components together to test if the system behave properly when wired together please read the above line again goal is not to test end to end user behavior 
गोल इज नॉट टू टेस्ट एन टू एन बिहेवियर गोल इज जस्ट टू सी इफ मल्टीपल मॉड्यूल्स और सिस्टम वायर टूगेदर डज इंटेंटेड बिहेवियर इज अचीव और नॉट सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन अ सिंपल लैंग्वेज योर योर लेट से फॉर दिस फीचर फीचर वन इट हैज मल्टीपल कॉम्पोनेंट्स डिपेंडेंसी component 1 component 2 component 3 component 4 component 5 component 6 so as part of integration testing our goal is not to do end to end testing of a feature no our goal is that multiple modules if wired together working intended behavior is achieved or not so it could be component 2 versus component 3 Does when component two, component three wired together, does intended behavior achieved or not? And even we don't have to do a multiple different microservices, different component itself. Let's say even in the component three itself, we have multiple modules like service layer, repository, DB. When they all wired together, is intended behavior achieved or not? okay earlier in unit testing we have only done a testing of a method one method but now in the integration testing we are wiring auto wired let's say it has a class 2 class 1 class 2 and uh, let's say this is db so now in class 1 you are doing auto wiring of class 2 so auto wiring work properly or not class 2 is inserting the data into the db does data inserted properly or not so you are doing an integration testing between a module so i think i have already explained you this use cases with an example but understand this wired multiple modules of one component so even though a feature or end to end have multiple components but even for one component itself there are multiple modules like service repository db so you integrate them do proper auto wiring you don't mock it do proper auto wiring and see that hey my particular flow is achieved or not properly inserted into db or not so you let's say you invoke a method into service layer verify the spring dependency injection works properly or not because it might be injecting the dependency of repository okay and the flow should reach till database layer okay so you test and assert that data was persisted properly into the db so this is one kind of integration testing now this is not end to end flow no it's not end to end like request is you are sending the request to an api and you are just testing the response i should get send this re request and response should be this no you are just testing that hey if i integrate this three modules this is what i want to achieve use case to integrate with multiple components not all components present in the system might be some let's say service a service b i just want to test that if i integrate properly that hey proper response mapping error handling is happening or not if i am doing service a published to kafka then i can do an integration testing between this that hey if service a is publishing some message to kafka is message is successfully published or not that's only my integration testing service a is sending a mail i am just doing a testing between this and i can validate hey payload is built and sent correctly via mail or not so it you can say that it might be a smaller scope testing integration testing might be a smaller in the scope as compared to functional testing so functional testing means end to end testing of a feature business functionality verifying it is work as expected or not so now let's say again functional testing has two different scope scope 1 scope 2 don't get confused let's say the scope is your component and another scope is like complete system complete system so in your component you have some clients client 1 client 2 but these are not end user but these are not end user it is different another microservice okay so you have certain apis exposed so these client x call those api let's say slash payment api now this once this api invoke it might call service it might call 
repository it might call db this service layer it might call kafka it might call mail server it might call some external service some different service service b this is service a okay so once this api is invoked the end to end behavior of this feature so slash payment is an api if client invoke this api the whole flow is tested now okay and what exactly the response or result should have seen to the client so now here if you see this is also a functional testing because we are now invoking an endpoint sending the request and ultimately getting the response and we are checking what response should have now i don't have like a hey, if service a and between kafka it's this work properly or not i don't know it is a black box to me now this is black box to me i don't know between if data persisted into db or not i don't know if mail sent or not i don't know if service b invoked or not i don't know but what i know is that the response which i got if response has this 50 fields i can validate this 50 fields it should have that send mail to true means i can now validate this hey this response has this field true set or not after this it should because when i call this api it should send a mail so i should now validate this hey does it present transaction id or not if a transaction id is present means transaction is successful some insertion happens so now you can understand the differences now you are sending you are testing end to end you are calling an endpoint passing the request you get a response and you are validating the response now similarly so that is use case one for one component also you can write a functional testing for use case two is like end to end large component level testing uh, cross component level testing how the end user interact with system so now let's say that this feature one has five components involved and from the ui let's say if i click on slash pay internally it calls component 1 then component 2 component 3 component 4 component 5 they might be doing something everything is black box to you now you are testing end to end functionality from user perceptive right that is also functional testing but you can say that cross component so all this components here in this there is a stage environment or also called qa so all components deploy their manifest so ca what is their manifest component 2 component 3 component 4 component 5 all deploy their manifest and the testing is done now like how the actual end user performs okay either through ui or either through you through postman directly invoke the but from the start could be possible that it should come from front end app also from front end to end what's the request again what's the response so now let's back to the unit testing like unit testing has multiple framework j unit very important test ng mockito and easy mock this is for mocking the behavior we will see that spoc so most probably we will use j unit with mockito and we'll see you in the future uh, topics of the j unit now Okay guys any doubt with this uh, ping me in the comment section we can discuss further thank you bye